every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Roman Catholic Archbishop in Trinidad and Tobago calls on faithful to keep Lent sacred while praying and fasting for Ukraine. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday, March 4th, 2022. Details when we return. Hubbard's Multi-Department Mount Gay and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's Quality Service. Affordable prices. Welcome back. As parishioners received their ashes on Wednesday, Archbishop of Port of Spain Charles Jason Gordon encouraged them to take the Lenten season seriously. He said there is a need to keep Lent sacred this year as there are many situations that require the help of God, like the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Archbishop Gordon is urging all to fast for Ukraine. Details in this TTT news item. During his homily at the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Roman Catholic Church in San Fernando, Archbishop of Port of Spain Charles Jason Gordon reminded parishioners about the importance of keeping Lent sacred. Brothers and sisters, we are accustomed to starting Lent hot and sweaty. Everybody wants ashes. And by the time first Friday in Lent come, we forget it's even Lent. He said the world needs prayer more than ever. And we find ourselves plunged into a world of fragility like we've not known for a long, long time. When a major, a country that has nuclear arms goes to red alert with nuclear armament, you know that things are not the same as we know them before. This has not happened in my lifetime. And this is the most fragile we have been at peace in my lifetime. The Archbishop said while there is great reason to be concerned, there is also a greater reason to turn to God. At the end of the day, our peace is not in Putin's hands or in the hands of America or NATO. Our peace is in the hands of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Archbishop said Ukraine must be remembered in this period. Let us be joyful in living our Lent. So as Joel calls us to their public prayer and fasting and repentance, so too the Holy Father has made today a day of prayer and fasting on behalf of Ukraine. So I'm asking that we enter into that. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent. Lent is a 40-day season marked by repentance, fasting and reflection. Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TDT News. CARICOM got down to business on regional pressing issues at their 33rd intersessional meeting in Belize on Wednesday. More in this Barbados Today news report. CARICOM Chairman, host Prime Minister John Brasenio, told his colleagues the summit was taking place as the region faces untold challenges, even as citizens press for a better standard of living. We meet at a time when unprecedented and existential challenges coincide with our citizens' expectations for relief and prosperity. The international climate is riddled with crises, conflicts, and suffering. Every country, every region is managing, they say, unprecedented challenges with, they say, inadequate sources. The global unraveling is occurring against the backdrop of what appears to be a new Cold War. As we meet, Russia has invaded Ukraine. This is a flagrant violation of international law. We condemn it in the strongest terms, this unjustified invasion. There must be an immediate cessation of hostilities, an immediate and unilateral withdrawal 
of all Russian troops from Ukraine. We call for all to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. Outgoing CARICOM Chairman and Tegan Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brung urged countries to move forward with the implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy that allows for the free movement of goods, skills, labor, and services across the region to help fast track economic recovery. We can no longer afford the luxury of delaying approval of key instruments such as the financial services agreement, investment policy, incentive regimes, and the development and regulation of a regional securities market. The full operationalization of the CSME is required for the transformation of our economies and to fight for a robust post-COVID recovery. Dr. Don Blackman, a popular politician and friend to many Barbadians, received a fitting send-off at a funeral service to bid farewell to a well-respected son of Barbados' soil. The island's top officials attending the service included Deputy Prime Minister Santia Bradshaw and her cabinet colleagues, Chief Justice Patterson Cheltenham, former Prime Ministers Sir Lloyd Erskine Sanford and Frundell Stewart, current Democratic Labour Party President Steve Blackett, former Finance Minister Chris Sinkler, and other figures. Delivering the eulogy, Dr. Aubrey Armstrong, Blackman's longtime friend, told the gathering of an intelligent, bold politician, professor, and diplomat who loved to serve others and connect with people. He, he, he had this ability to look down the road and see the scene with street sense and a social sense of being with people. And the people, the, 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 the servers and the kitchen and so on, and the Hilton in Barbados, they're all watching. The people at IHOP in Florida, they're all watching. They all cried. Not because he gave him a tip, because he was a real person to all of them. And the people in the Ivy who came on Sunday, that's right, he was real to them. Abdul Pandor, also a close friend of the former government minister and MP for St. Michael East, said Blackman was the greatest leader Barbados never had. Don has his challenges with both political parties, but Don knew when to leave the arena of elective politics. I never felt for one moment that Don missed the limelight that was associated with being a parliamentarian or being a minister. He lived his life after politics in a most enjoyable a wonderful way. I shared most of that time with him as well. Now, Dawn cared very much for the poor and the senior citizens. His legacy will always be intact with the establishment of the Home Health Program. Who would ever forget that image in the news media where you had, in 1991, you had this old lady, and she was butting her head against a concrete wall, crying aloud, Dawn has left Barbados. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The recent spate of gun crimes in St. Lucia has prompted fresh calls from the National Green Party, the NGP, for government to introduce a new industry on the island. National Green Party leader Andre de Keris believes that legalizing cannabis and commercializing it will help to get idle young men, many of whom are committing gun-related crimes, to obtain gainful employment and thus cut down on this social ill. We believe that once we legalize cannabis, that these young men would leave the ghetto and go and go cannabis for good salaries and then you'd see the crime go down. And we're wasting time. We, we need food. We're looking at food security. These very young men, and you, you wouldn't save, I mean, you can't save all of them. They have evil people in the world. They will always have evil people in the world. But a lot of them are frustrated because we, they've been ignored by both administrations. Because of their demeanor, D. Kerry says such young men are denied jobs in the traditional market. A lot of the, 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 the gun crime taking place is young men who are unemployed and are frustrated and are pissed off. And these are the young men that both administrations just ignored because of poverty. They have, um, 
disqualify themselves from traditional glove drop markets, the way they dress, they drink in spice and smoke in herb on the on the corner. Because nothing has been uh, no nothing has been presented to them in terms of work. De Kerry spoke against the backdrop of the recent spate of gun crimes on the island. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas. The government of Guyana used its majority on the Parliamentary Committee of Appointments to push through its nominee for the Natural Resource Fund Board while ignoring the two nominees of the opposition. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana tells us more. The APNU AFC Opposition Coalition today nominated Chartered Accountant and Attorney Christopher Ram and former head of the Environmental Protection Agency, Vincent Adams, to be considered for the position of director on the board of the Natural Resource Fund. The government side nominated former Guy Mine CEO Dunstan Barrow for the same position. Mr. Barrow is also a former PNC Member of Parliament who has been away from active politics for over two decades. Under the Natural Resource Fund Act, the National Assembly is allowed to put forward one person to sit as a director on the board, which will overlook the spending of the country's oil wealth. The other board members will be selected by the President. The opposition members on the Committee of Appointments walked out of the meeting this afternoon as it became clear to them that the opposition's nominees were going to be ignored and the government would use its majority on the committee to ensure its nominee is a person who will be put forward for the position. One opposition official with knowledge of today's meeting said that the government has shown that it has no interest in transparency and inclusivity since it has blocked the opposition nominees for the seat on the NRF board. The official said the government side had no interest in even giving a fair hearing or consideration of the opposition nominees. News source understands that once the opposition walked out of the meeting after the government made known its preference, the government went ahead and sealed the deal by voting for its own nominee. The nominee's name will now be sent to the National Assembly for final consideration. With the government holding the majority in the Assembly, its nominee is expected to be given the all clear and sent to the President for appointment to the Board, along with the President's own nominees. The opposition had initially indicated that it was not going to participate in the process, as it maintains that the bill, which has since been signed into law and has created the Natural Resource Fund Act, was not properly passed. There has been no move to the court to challenge the passage, and the opposition decided to submit nominees. The Alliance for Change was the first to put forward a nomination. It was the AFC that nominated Vincent Adams. The nomination of Christopher Ram for the position came from the PNC Reform, which is the largest party in the APNU AFC coalition. The opposition has expressed concern about transparency and overlooking the spending of the oil funds by a board that was fully put together by the government. The president has said that he will be fair in his choices for the NRF board membership. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easy and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans would deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, you better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I'm Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.